Episode 3 Beast on the Bed Wow, really? Chloe Lidden, are you a beast? A strong feeling of regret came flooding back to me once again. If I had known that he would take care of himself so seriously, I would never have gotten into an accident. But I wasn't sure about that either. No matter how much I thought about it, my condition last night was not normal. It wasn't that he had taken medication to make him lose his mind, and he couldn't understand or interpret how he had caused such a once-in-a-lifetime accident. Oh, wait. You drank alcohol yesterday, right? The inn we stayed at yesterday was in Arn, a small town about halfway between Borgen, where her house was, and Roizen, where the Duke's residence was. To be exact, it was built alone in a strangely ambiguous location, far from the entrance of the neighborhood. It took her a full day to get from her hometown to Duke's house, so she stopped by every time to stay overnight, and yesterday was her third visit. Perhaps because of her location, there weren't many customers and there was a back door, so it was the perfect place to disguise as a man and come out at dawn to avoid the gaze of others, as long as you pay the lodging fee in advance. That's why I chose it as my accommodation. Yesterday, as always, there were no other customers other than her in the restaurant on the first floor of her inn when she went down to have dinner. This had never happened on a previous visit, but yesterday the owner, an elderly couple, offered me a drink, saying they made it themselves. It was difficult to refuse because she was so eager to offer it and she was the only customer. In fact, Considering that it was her last day of vacation before returning to the Duke's residence, she felt like getting drunk. She felt sorry for having to ask Calcus to be her mother, and even felt burdened at having to spend another month dressed as a man until her next vacation. I wondered if I could forget for a moment if I drank alcohol. She had barely ever drank alcohol, so she didn't even know how much she could drink. Did she perhaps have some kind of poison in that drink? She had heard rumors of such a crime. At a banquet where drinks are served, people secretly add aphrodisiacs to their drinks for a night of pleasure-seeking. But she quickly shook her head. Because she couldn't understand her own behavior so much, she started to have all sorts of doubts. The old couple who offered her alcohol, when she actually drank alcohol, gave her chocolate, saying it had properties that would detoxify her alcohol. Even if she was drunk and drugged, she couldn't help but think that if she got on, it was her kind old people who got on. Why would an old couple who looks so innocent and weak commit such a crime when there is no benefit to them in such a secluded place where few customers stop by? Why yesterday? He has nothing to do with himself? No, that doesn't make sense. It made no logical sense that the good old men who had even given her chocolate out of fear of her getting drunk should have done such a thing yesterday because they expected her to show up there and drink her drink. So it couldn't have been her drug addiction. Ah. Turns out she had forgotten the medicine. As she thought about the medicine, she suddenly remembered the medicine she couldn't take. For several years now, her mother has made sure to take her medicine and feed her when her seasons change. What kind of medicine is this? Do I have some kind of incurable disease? She asked several times because she always fed it to her, but not to her older brother, Klein, but her mother just said it was her nutritional supplement. I thought it was because she didn't have any symptoms even after taking the medicine, but she couldn't take the medicine this time. The last time she took medication was right after the accident about three or four months ago, and her mother suffered from torticollis and was now bedridden. Instead of taking care of her medicine, she had to have someone else give her her own medicine. In any case, she probably didn't take any special medication yesterday. Even though she didn't take the medicine. It would have been more correct to say that if she had taken her medicine, it had been the Duke who had taken it, not her. Seeing how things have changed like that. 
Duke Hughley Wolfes is someone no one could have imagined would turn into a beast in bed. The Duke, the young head of the Wolfes Duchy, which had produced sword masters for generations, was recognized as the most outstanding sword master in the history of the El Rayan Empire. In fact, what was more famous than his abilities was his handsome appearance that captivated the souls of those who saw him. If he had the abilities of a sword master, he could be a bit ugly. He had unrivaled beauty. The fact that he was the most outstanding sword master in the era when the now extinct beast men ruled over humans was drowned out by the praise for his appearance. And for such a beautiful sword master, wouldn't the world be fair if her personality was at least half as different? However, the world was not fair, and although the duke was not friendly or particularly gentle, he had a balanced personality that did not lose manners and dignity. He literally almost became the most perfect human being in the Alien Empire. However, perhaps even God was jealous of his perfection, and there was a rumor about him that was fatal enough to cancel out all his fame. Duke Hughley Wolfes is a eunuch. This was exactly the rumor attached to the Duke. The nickname Eunuch Duke has become a proper noun. Of course, the rumor was not this fatal from the beginning. At first, despite the strangeness of his avoidance of women, to the point where even the domestic animals seem to be all male, he simply avoids, dislikes, and despises women. It was just a rumor. No one can pick it because it hangs on a tree so high that it cannot be reached, but it is as if they cannot bear to see the desirable fruit fall to the ground. It must have been because they couldn't bear to cause frustration to so many women in the kingdom with a rumor that was even worse. However, as the excessive isolation of not even allowing access to any woman continued for several years, the rumor gradually developed into, he engages in sodomy. It seems like they are trying to limit the people who will be disappointed to only women. However, just because he stayed away from women, the duke did not have any traces of sodomy. In fact, even men felt uncomfortable when they got too close. That's why Chloe always took instructions a few steps away from him. In the end, after another year or so, the rumor changed to, an important part was broken. Equally and completely frustrating both men and women in the kingdom. Breakdown, that is, eunuch. Go to sleep. You're funny. It doesn't seem like there was a malfunction that prevented it from surviving, but rather a malfunction that prevented it from dying overnight. No no. Let's not think about it. She tried to push back the frantic memories that were trying to pop into her mind. I had to forget about last night's major disaster as quickly as possible and focus on the present. Only then will I be able to safely repay my debt and escape from this bondage of crossdressing. Duchy of Wolfas was called at a dream job due to the exceptionally higher salary than any other job, but in fact Chloe had no intention of working here for a long time. Because she did not meet the critical conditions for employment. The Wolfas Duchy had strange employment regulations that were not found in other workplaces, and as a result, the term, dream job, was applied only to men. Article 1, 1 of the employment regulations for employees of the Wolfa's dukedom. Must be male. No one should invite women into the duke's residence for any reason, or create a reason for women to enter. If any of paragraphs 1 and 2 are violated, the total amount of salary already paid and a penalty must be paid. The amount of the penalty is the same as the total salary already paid. These were truly strange regulations and it was because of these regulations that the duke's salary was significantly higher. Because they did not hire any female servants, the Wolfa's duchy had to do all the work that was considered the domain of female servants, all male servants. In addition, the fact that there was a penalty provision in addition to the monthly salary paid was intimidating even to those who had no reason to violate the contract. So, naturally, Chloe, as a woman, could not work at the duchy. 
At first she had no intention of doing so. Nevertheless, the reason she came to work at this house was because her twin brother Klein, who had been hired as a servant at the Duke's house, died before her first day of work. She, of course, had initially intended to break the news of her brother's death to the duchy and inform them that she would not be able to begin work. But she was soon forced to change her mind. Because on the day her brother died, even her mother was in a state of death. In order to save her mother, who was going back and forth between life and death, a medicine made with the magic core of a monster known to be extinct was needed. The medicine was so expensive that ordinary people could not even dare to pay for it, and it was exactly the same as the one year's salary that my brother was scheduled to receive for being employed by the Wolfa's duchy. In the end, Chloe had no other options. Other than that she disguised herself as a man and pretended to be Klein to get a job. She was in an urgent situation and couldn't afford to look for another job, but she decided that only the dukedom would pay her a year's salary in advance. However, the choice of cross-dressing was something she couldn't avoid, but it wasn't something she didn't want to avoid. How uncomfortable and heartbreaking it must be for her to have to lie about her gender. So, of course, she planned to quit her job as a duke once she had paid back all the money. In order for her to do that, she had to somehow survive safely for at least a year. I did. What a mistake one night with the duke was. Her one year's salary, which she received from her parents, was spent on treatment, and was long gone as soon as she received it. She couldn't even leave her mother, who hadn't fully recovered to the point where she left her place, to pay for her ongoing treatment. In the end, she is in a situation where Carl Kurth is paying for her daily treatment expenses. In this situation, what if you have to cough up a year's worth of salary that has already been used up and a corresponding penalty? No. It was a home that made her heart swell just imagining it. To the extent that she must never be found out that she is a woman. Moreover, it may not have been just a matter of money.